I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I didn't misspell anything! Not once, not one time! So, you guys voted on Twitter to review crappy video game movies instead of crappy superhero movies, and I'm going to do that. And it worked out perfectly because Assassin's Creed comes out in December. This couldn't have been more perfect. Let's talk about some really horrible video game adaptations. My god! There's a lot to choose from! Starting with DOA, Dead or Alive. Let's start by taking a look at the Blu-ray. The best movie adaptation of a video game so far. Is that a compliment? It's one breathless martial arts action sequence after the other. See, that could also be a positive or a negative. I'm sure you all know that the Dead or Alive games are just the best fighting games ever made. They're way better than the Mortal Kombat games. They're far better than the Super Smash games. I mean, Dead or Alive is the pinnacle of fighting games. We all know that. I remember seeing these games quite often. They went through a period of extreme popularity, as well as the Dead or Alive volleyball games, which for obvious reasons had some popularity amongst adolescent boys. I won't lie. I played a demo of that game. Yeah. I was hardcore. Inevitably, we eventually got DOA, Dead or Alive, the movie. A movie with the acronym DOA really is a bad idea because this movie in every way is dead on arrival. The opening shot of this movie has such horrendous CGI, it looks like it's an episode of Beast Wars from the 90s. And of course, the opening scene takes place in Japan with a bunch of Japanese people who speak English all the time when they're alone. So the character of Kasumi flees her home in a ripoff of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and then this happens. So did she have paragliding equipment underneath her clothes that entire time? And who sent that device? That's some amazing aim. Never mind. And honestly, it's like the filmmakers just don't want us to question anything that happens because whenever something incredibly dumb happens, which trust me is a lot, they just cut to like some beautiful woman in a bikini or some butt shot. It happens a lot. Trust me, we're going to get into the butt shots. We're going to we're going to get into the butt shots. So Jamie Presley plays Tina Armstrong and she's introduced with a hilariously terrible fight scene that looks like Mortal Kombat Annihilation made love to Dragon Ball Evolution. Does that sound like a good combination to you? Because to me that sounds like hell. So Tina gets picked for this tournament as well as Christy who gets introduced with this scene. My God, the fact that this even exists is incredible. And her kicks come complete with whip sound effects. We're gonna get more into those sound effects later. Trust me. So all of these people have been chosen for the Dead or Alive tournament. They're supposed to go to this place where they compete to see who's the best fighter ever. And of course, there's like a stupid dumb backstory with nanobots because of course, you know, nanobots. My god, there's a backstory with nanobots. This film also features horrific wire work. I guess Kasumi can fly. I mean, everyone in this movie just defies gravity at a constant rate. I don't really know what I was expecting, but at least 90% of this movie is just pervy shots of girls' bodies. That's all it is. Now, this, this isn't something that I complain about necessarily, especially in a movie like this. My issue with Dead or Alive, the biggest one that I have with it, is that this film should just be that. Just 
girls fighting and it's like tongue in cheek and fun and that's it. This film actually has the guts to have a story. Like a dramatic backstory. Kasumi has this tragic past with her brother who tried to protect her. The horrifyingly bad villain played by Eric Roberts from The Dark Knight is somebody who wants to suck all of these players' energy into him through nanobot technology. We'll get more into that, but it's like, couldn't you have just had it be a tournament movie? Just have it be like the Dragon Ball Z World Tournament. My god. God, what were they thinking? So I said I'd mention more of the sound effects. This girl's kick sounds like a rocket flew by. And this guy's arms come complete with GoldenEye 64 sound effects. Also what's hilarious is these people don't meet at a tournament arena. They just have like watches that flash the person's name they're going to fight and that person just like shows up in their hotel room, like busts through the door, destroys the property. They have fights like everywhere, in public, in front of people. They don't have a dedicated arena. Couldn't they have just had an arena? Anything, just anything. They just they just show up and be like, hey, we're supposed to fight. Oh shit. Ah, ah. And of course, what would any movie like this be without a ton of lesbian jokes? Oh my God. No, Dad, she's just another fighter. We're just sleeping together. Yeah, I can see that. No, no, I mean, we're, we're not sleeping together. We're just sleeping. Sweetie, I've come at a bad time again, haven't I? Does uh, Christy know about you too? Dad! Yep, that's what this movie needed. Lesbian jokes. But hey, at least there's a volleyball scene. It's probably the best scene in the movie because it's so dumb and you're just like, fine. There's also another backstory with this girl named Ayane who's stalking Kasumi everywhere because she's in love with Kasumi's brother or something and she constantly challenges Kasumi to fights. So in between the horribly choreographed tournament fight scenes that don't actually take place in a tournament arena, we get a bunch of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon ripoff scenes. This film was directed by Corey Yuen, Mm. This was the last film he ever directed, and that really doesn't surprise me at all. Now I'm going to show you an actual scene from this movie. I have changed nothing. So the beginning of the next fight scene is like the beginning of a terrible porn. I have never seen a more fan service movie than this. This is the closest I've ever seen to like an anime fan service live action movie. But this fight scene did give me my biggest laugh in the entire film. <laughs> so when Tina has to do her big fight scene, for whatever reason, she chooses denim and boots. You know, the best fighting attire, and she's also given an amazingly lifelike and realistic sound effect. So right here, this very abrupt and unnecessary backstory is revealed with the dude running this joint, this nanobot scheme he has, and it's just like, why? This should have been just a fight movie, a mindlessly dumb popcorn film, and we're given this huge backstory, and characters have dramatic depth. But hey, I mean, at least we get this moment out of this scene. Back, and now we get a sword fight scene where this girl is apparently slicing through dozens of people and there is not a drop of blood in sight. This is pathetic. I'm sorry. How am I supposed to believe that any of this is taking place? How am I supposed to believe an ounce of this? This girl is slicing through like 35 people and they're all just like, uh, uh, uh. 
And this is where the movie truly goes to shit. I mean, it was already awful, but this, this is when it gets bad. Donovan captures everyone and then uses special sunglasses that he refers to as the future to absorb all of their various powers and abilities. I'm actually not sure what happens, but he puts on sunglasses and then can analyze what someone is about to do. And he becomes like the best fighter ever, as long as he's wearing those sunglasses. Kasumi's brother is of course still alive. He's been kept there as a slave or something. I don't know. It's amazing. Lee bad. The next moment in the movie is by far the most unbelievable one. Out loud, when I watched this last night, I said to myself, how was this released in theaters? So of course all the girls have to team up to fight this guy, and just like every other fight scene in the movie, it's filled with obvious stunt doubles, terrible wire work, and very basic fight choreography. More falling people are saved hilariously, and then the dude's sunglasses finally fall off. And now he can't fight anymore. I just have one question. If you're like this evil mastermind, and you want to become a super strong fighter, why would you make the one object that makes you a super strong fighter sunglasses? Possibly the worst thing to wear during a fight scene. Forget about the Matrix Reloaded and the Matrix Revolutions. Wearing sunglasses while fighting is probably a terrible idea because they're just going to fly off. Why would you make that be your only hope? So of course the entire place is eventually going to blow up because there's a ticking time bomb the guy set for some reason. Who knows why he wanted to blow up his place, but everyone jumps away and it's slow motion explosions and this film has no idea where to end by the way. Everyone's making out on a boat and then it kind of cuts to black like, hey, it's over. And then we get a weird montage of all of the sexy parts and they're like hey i guess that ending wasn't cool enough so let's show a montage of the sexy parts and let people leave on a high but then it continues to go the girls are like back in japan and they're gonna fight all these men and i guess they're a team now so yay they didn't make any more of these thank god guys doa dead or alive is terrible what i mean what <laughs> everything about this movie is bad it's awful. I mean, what did you expect me to say? Guys, stay tuned because I'm going to be reviewing some more terrible video game movies leading up to Assassin's Creed. You guys are the best. Thank you so much as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.